The early months of the PlayStation's lifespan brought about many futuristic themed titles that would literally set the main presence or theme moving forward with the console for many years to come. One of the games on this list was known as High Octane that saw a release not only on the PlayStation in late 1995 but it also got ports on the Sega Saturn and even the PC with MS-DOS that would act as a vehicle of combat racing game that was published by Bullfrog that played very similarly to the Wipeout games by Psygnosis also on the PlayStation that was released around that time. So you pick your different types of hovercrafts or ships and your goal is to literally just race around each of the unique tracks and environments while using and weapons to obliterate your opponents with the main aim to win the overall event so there are many different ships with all of their own visual styles and detailed attributes some have better handling physics some are faster than others some are more powerful in terms of the damage that they can use with regards to weapons so there's a multitude of different attributes that will appeal to your own play style upon its release the game did receive decent reviews praising it for its intricate elements and its futuristic themes and making it to be a good alternative to Wipeout that was also released in and around that time. Again, it was just a long line of futuristic themed games that you would see on the console moving forward from that point on. The one thing to note, however, as with the PlayStation, because of the draw distance with the graphics and visuals, you will notice that there is fog elements in the distance as the draw distance in these games, the PlayStation often struggled with being able to render environmental elements in real time. So a lot of times you couldn't really see anything until you were nearly on top of it. So with this game, it kind of mimics a fog kind of vibe to it that you can't really see what's coming until you're almost on top of it. So it added a unique premise and atmosphere to the game in many regards. Graphically, the game wouldn't have been considered as good as other racing games or titles seen at that time. If you compare it to Wipeout, there is no competition competition really because Wipeout at the time was considered one of the best looking games ever on the console so this game didn't even compare to that in many regards but it brought enough to the table that it could compare as a good alternative to the game with regards to the tracks the environments the game modes also with the likes of the combat physics within the game now it does take a bit of getting used to once you get familiar with the tracks and the control systems you can definitely master each of the ships and each of the environments that's available what's really cool about this game is that there are a multitude of different modes multiplayer modes the game even allows you to play utilizing four distinct camera views from playing from behind the vehicle even to like a first person even almost like a cinematic style view so you, the camera will transition to different elements but even with regards to the game play modes there is specific modes one in particular that when you start racing every couple of seconds every 10 to 15 seconds it will transition to a different ship that's currently on the track so you will have about 10 or 15 seconds to literally race as that vehicle so you can either destroy other vehicles or try to aim to win the race so it keeps changing back and forth yes it is very confusing when you think about it but it's actually a really cool idea and you don't often see that in games very few games at that time really tried those concepts even even when I was playing it when recording this video it was the first time I'd really sat down and played that mode and I actually thought it was quite fun but at the same time it's very overwhelming at the same time to say the least it just takes a bit of getting used to because you're changing ships and vehicles so much that you're getting used to one handling style then to be met with a different ship that completely handles totally differently or what can end up happening is that the ship that you're being transitioned to could be in the middle of a fight with someone else or could have been shot at which means it can be completely crashed into a wall or flipped around so it's not even pointing in the right direction so you don't really know where you're supposed to be so it can completely confuse you but I suppose that's just the fun element of it like with that type of mode yes you can win races on it but the main focus isn't really about winning it's just more about having fun and just having a laugh with it more to the point like many other games on the system yes it's not the best race but in many ways it is somewhat of a hidden gem as it does have a lot of intricate elements in it as you're racing you can go through pit stops to refuel your weapons your fuel even your shield so that you can still keep in the fight and not take as much damage now if you do end up losing all of your attributes and the ship is destroyed you will respawn but it just means you'll be a wee bit behind the pack 
but it is difficult to win races outright as well because there is a catch-up logic with the AI because they're never really too far away from you as well so if you do manage to win a race it will be down to sheer luck and skill to master all of the environments that are available now there are a number of different tracks at your disposal so there's plenty of options and with the modes and so forth to actually keep you playing for some time so it introduced a lot like when we think back this game was released in 1995 and while it may not be the prettiest game on the system for its time it definitely made up for it with its variety of game modes and features so there was definitely enough here to keep you playing for quite a while plus it really suited the futuristic vibe and theme that was surrounding many of the games that were being released on the console during that time it is a decent experience and it's easy to see why because the game in many ways in recent times there's a lot more even content creators are starting to revisit a lot of these older games and this game does pop up an awful lot in gameplay videos so more and more people are starting to revisit this game because clearly they're finding some enjoyment out of it so it is worth a play through just for that reason alone just to see what you think of it and even just to experience an earlier time of what games looked played and felt like back then and many of them are just as fun to play today as they've ever been regardless of the graphics or what people would have thought of them really they still are a lot of fun in many ways it is a good alternative to the early white bike games it may not be as well fleshed out and as polished but it definitely provides some unique elements that do provide many fun moments that you will have so it is worth that alone but aside from that i would love to know your thoughts of high octane for the playstation and what do you think of it overall is it a game that you would have played back in the early days of the playstation or have you yet to experience the game overall or do you enjoy these futuristic themed racers that were being seen over the console's lifespan so be sure to share it down in the comments below and if you would like to see more content around other types of videos like this that were also released on the playstation even other games that i've covered on the channel then you can check out the videos here on screen to see more of those games in action and as always keep those gaming memories alive